December 24th. Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible. Proverbs chapter 24 from the Old Testament. Do not envy evil people. Do not desire to be with them. For their hearts contemplate violence and their lips speak harm. By wisdom a house is built and through understanding it is established. By knowledge its rooms are filled with all kinds of precious and pleasing treasures. A wise warrior is strong and a man of knowledge makes his strength stronger. For with guidance you wage your war and with numerous advisors there is victory. Wisdom is unattainable for a fool. In court he does not open his mouth. The one who plans to do evil will be called a scheming person. A foolish scheme is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to people. If you faint in the day of trouble, your strength is small. Deliver those being taken away to death, and hold back those slipping to the slaughter. If you say, but we did not know about this, does not the one who evaluates hearts consider? Does not the one who guards your life know? Will he not repay each person according to his deeds? Eat honey, my child, for it is good, and honey from the honeycomb is sweet to your taste. Likewise, know that wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Do not lie in wait like the wicked against the place where the righteous live. Do not assault his home. Although a righteous person may fall seven times, he gets up again. But the wicked will be brought down by calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and when he stumbles, do not let your heart rejoice. Lest the Lord see it and be displeased, and turn his wrath away from him. Do not fret because of evil people, or be envious of wicked people. For the evil person has no future, and the lamp of the wicked will be extinguished. Fear the Lord, my child, as well as the king, and do not associate with rebels. For suddenly their destruction will overtake them, and who knows the ruinous judgment both the Lord and the King can bring. These sayings also are from the wise. To show partiality in judgment is terrible. The one who says to the guilty, you are innocent, peoples will curse him and nations will denounce him. But there will be delight for those who convict the guilty, and a pleasing blessing will come on them. Like a kiss on the lips is the one who gives an honest answer. Establish your work outside and get your fields ready. Afterward, build your house. Do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause and do not deceive with your words. Do not say, I will do to him just as he has done to me. I will pay him back according to what he has done. I passed by the field of a sluggard by the vineyard of one who lacks wisdom. I saw the thorns had grown up all over it. The ground was covered with weeds and its stone wall was broken down. When I saw this, I gave careful consideration to it. I received instruction from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to relax, and your poverty will come like a bandit and your need like an armed robber. God, a lot of people have probably heard the ending of this uh, chapter in Proverbs, the little sleep, little slumber, little folding of the hands to relax. But usually when I hear it from people, it's done in a uh, positive light. Is that the word to use? In a, in a good light. Uh, but that's, that's not what you're saying here at all. Uh, you're talking about somebody who passed by a field that uh, was just overgrown and, and the wall was all broken, covered with weeds. And it, it was just a shambles, basically. And it was a field of a sluggard is the word that they use. Uh, by the vineyard of one who lacks wisdom. So that comparison again between wisdom and, and how your life looks, basically. And it says, when I saw this, I gave careful consideration to it. I received instruction from what I saw. That if you have a little bit of sleep, a little bit of slumber, uh, if you fold your hands to relax, your pro poverty will come like a bandit and your need like an armed robber. Um, we have so many examples in our life uh, of things that we can see that people are doing wrong. In fact, I think we're pretty good at seeing other people's faults. But we're not very good at this piece of recognition, of looking at somebody's life, not judging them, but then putting the application to our own lives. 
in this particular case, uh, not working hard enough of looking at your own life, maybe you're working too hard for all the wrong reasons. Uh, maybe you're not working hard enough and you're acting self-entitled. <coughs> maybe you're not doing what you're supposed to in your job because we haven't checked in with you, God. I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of different things that when we look at people's lives, a lot of times our first reaction is to judge them. Oh, they're a sluggard. Oh, they're not very smart. Oh, look at their fields. But God, I just pray for wisdom for ourselves that we would learn how to apply it to our own lives, to look at these different situations that bother us or trouble us uh, and really use them to examine our own lives. You know, there's very clear cut things in my life that I know you're having me work on. They're pretty obvious, <laughs> kind of like neon. There's other things that I go to you and say, you've got to show me what else I need to work on because I'm not seeing it. Um, so please show it to me. And sometimes you have people who come into my life who tell me, you know, that's not doing so well. Um, and I work on it from that. Other times I have situations that come in, but just like this example uh, that is given, a lot of times you show it to me through the world. And sometimes I completely miss the point because I'm so uh, attached to pointing out somebody else's flaws that I fail to realize that what you're actually showing me is a, a reflection, a, a mirror of what is happening in my own life. God, that filter that's in me that is self-focused, that, al that filter also does a lot of uh, numbing down of things so that I don't see things as clearly as other people do of me. God, I just ask that according to your will that you remove that from me, that I can see things more clear in my life as to what the reality is of what I'm doing, what my heart is, what my words come across as. I've lived with myself for over 40 years. <laughs> Sometimes I just am used to how I act and talk and, and say certain things. I may in that process not realize what I'm doing to other people. So God, I just ask that you remove that filter. I can't see the reality of my own life because I'm too close to it. Please continue to still put people into my life. Uh, allow me the wisdom to hear from them and more importantly, act on what they're saying to me. Don't let my ego uh, get in the way. And, and then just like this situation, allow me to see those mirrors you put in my life of situations and not to become attracted to the situation because <clears throat> oh that poor person uh, look at what has happened to them but really apply it to my life and see if it's something that you're trying to show me uh, that I also need to work on. God I thank you for always wanting us to better ourselves to continue to work uh, to make our lives what you originally created us for. I thank you also for giving me the strength to do some of this hard work Without you, there's no way it would be so painful uh, without you. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.